Now that we've looked at how we can access a program in the slot rack, load a preset into that program, and then also have a good look behind the scenes to see what's actually in a program, it's time to look at loading multiple programs. You can load up to 64 slots into the slot rack. In this video, I'm going to keep things simple and start with three. I've selected the second program and I'm off to my media bay to find a preset, but there's nothing in the media bay. And that's because the attribute that was selected is not relevant for this instrument. I've deselected it and now I can see all of the presets and I've double clicked to load it into program two. I'm repeating the same process for program three. This time I've selected a drum sound, urban hip hop, and I'm selecting a preset by double clicking on it. It's loaded into that third program. I can view each instrument or program's macro page simply by clicking on the program in the slot rack. That's all really straightforward, but now I need to consider how I'm going to control three programs at once with one external MIDI controller. Notice that the MIDI channels are set to A1, A2, A3. I'm changing the output on my MIDI controller to channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3. But what if I want to control all three programs simultaneously? Well, I've got a set of MIDI trigger pads on my external MIDI controller, and I've set the output to A10. So now I'm matching my third program, the drum program, to A10. My trigger pads are taking care of the drums, and I've gone back to my second program, and I've changed the MIDI input to A1, which means I'm controlling both the first two programs with the MIDI keyboard itself. The first and third programs contain rhythmical phrases, so it could get messy if I don't play them in time. So I'm going over to the B-Box macro tab, selecting auxiliary and saying only change on the next beat. I can do exactly the same with anima. So that means whenever I play a note on the drums and also on the keyboards, it'll wait until the very next beat before it's triggered, which means they'll always be in time with each other. I also want these arpeggiators to hold the notes that I'm playing until I play another one. In the anima macro page, I turned hold on. Now I'm going to the auxiliary page in the B-Box and I'm also selecting on. Now I've played one note on the Anima program and one note on the Beatbox program, and they've both been held. Which leaves me free to play something on the second program, which is the Skylab instrument. The only problem I have now is that the Anima and the Skylab instrument both share the same MIDI channel. So whatever I play on one is triggering the other. I've got a two octave MIDI controller, which limits basically my keyboard space. So I'm going up to the MIDI tab and I'm changing the lowest key on the first program. I've made that C3. Now I'm going to the next program and I'm changing the highest key. The lowest section is now controlling Skylab, which is my second program. The upper section is controlling the Anima instrument, which is my first program. I'm controlling all three programs independently of each other using the one two octave MIDI controller. Now we know how to load multiple programs. We know how to change the MIDI inputs. We know how to blend them together and also create separate MIDI zones so that we can control them independently of each other. Now it's time to record something. I'm turning the metronome on by clicking on it and selecting on, and now I've hit the record button on the transport. I'm recording at the default tempo, which is 120, but I can change that just to the left of the transport. When I'm finished recording, I simply hit the play button to listen back to what I've recorded. I can also turn the click track off. The MIDI recorder is a really neat way of recording quick ideas that I can save as a MIDI file and recall in Halion at a later date or load into any other application that accepts MIDI files. Let's jump over to the mixer tab and have a quick look at the Halion mixer. The toolbar at the top has a list of icons. Selecting the icon will give us access to different components of the mixer. At the moment, we're in the slot bus section, which means we can adjust the level. We can change the individual output on each of the channels or slots. We can solo, we can mute, and we can also change the pan. We can expand the mix view by clicking on the arrow on the top right hand side. And now we can see all of our eight insert slots for each slot or each program. You can start to add inserts to further shape your sound. Now, the slot bar sits in the audio signal flow after the program tree. So the audio runs from top to bottom, straight through the program tree, and then goes over to the slot bus. Next up, we've got the four master auxiliary sends. Once again, we can specify an individual output for each one of these sends, and we can add up to eight inserts. This is where the signal flow ends up. This is the master output section. 
And there's so many flexible ways you can route the audio signal down through the program tree, through various elements, buses and effects, and give even the smallest component of your mix its very own master output channel or its own unique space inside of a surround sound mix. Next in the toolbar, we've got the child bus channels, which shows all of the buses that can be found inside the selected program or layer hierarchy. Click on the depending bus channels in the toolbox to see all of the buses that are in use for whichever program or layer you've got selected. And this also includes auxiliary buses. At the moment, the program layer is selected, but if I move down and select another layer, the view inside the mix console changes to reflect exactly what's going on inside of that layer in the program tree. When you've finished adding effects to individual programs, you can go up to the master channel. And again, there's eight slots, so we can add eight different effects to the master channel. Once you've finished shaping the individual programs, you can go to the master channel and add things like dynamic controls or EQs. Once I'm finished shaping the sound, I can save this as a multi-program preset. So I've given the preset a name, and on the right-hand column, I can start to add attributes, which will make it easy to find in the media bay. I can recall these presets in both the standalone version of Hellion 6, and also any instance of Hellion that's been hosted inside a door. Please follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel for plenty more videos on how to be creative with Hellion 6 and other Steinberg products. I'll catch you in the next video.